Ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to see is true. The vectors have been changed to protect the innocent. Hi everyone, and welcome to our channel. This is lesson 10 in our series, 3D Modeling for Newbies. As you can guess by now, we're going to take a look at how to make the Los Angeles Police Badge. It's one of the more iconic badges from TV shows. We'll be using a lot of the tools that you've already learned throughout the lessons, so it should be pretty simple. It just takes a little bit of patience we first would bring in the image of the badge that we would like to make. And we know if we right click on the badge, we can adjust the contrast of the image so it's easier to draw vectors. I'm going to use the trace bitmap option just to be able to get the outer shape of the oval. This will give me a close approximation of the size of the oval that I'm looking for. In the end, I'm going to actually draw an oval for my shape. And here's why. The original vector created by the trace bitmap has way too many nodes, and it's not even. Whereas my oval has only four nodes, and will give you a better finish. So the trace bitmap is just a guide. With that oval chosen, and with my logic of starting from the bottom up, we simply create a dome. And that's the shape of the badge that everything is going to be applied to. Part of behind the scenes is to create different levels and layers. This will help you keep everything in line and coordinated. We're going to start with the, what I call, the ribs. The three stripes that go around the edge of the badge with the X's. I've measured the thickness of the rib as well as the distance between each of them. I simply use the offset tool starting with the outer vector of the shape. As I've mentioned several times throughout the series, learning to draw vectors effectively and efficiently will help in your end results. And there's the oval vectors for my ribs. Now it's just the little X's that need to be done. I have my vectors for my top X, I close them, I select both of them, and I weld them together. And that's the X I'm going to use to create my 3D part. Since this badge is symmetrical, I don't need to draw all of the X's. I could take these two that are on the left and flip them over to the right. I did the same with the center top one and just flipped it down. So it's not necessary to draw everything. Sometimes you may only need one and you could rotate it or flip it. Find the most common denominator, create a good one of that 
and just copy and paste or rotate. Again, I keep the components on different levels so I can keep track of them. I select the ovals, create the shape, and there's the ribs. Notice that the levels are set to add. So level two with its ribs and X's is added to level one, which has the base shape. The next thing I want to create is the fan. I'm going to show you how I did it. For me, I try to find the easier way of doing things. So I create a small triangle. I create a component of that triangle, but I'm also going to tilt it from the top to the bottom. It's going to tilt up. So that when I create the fan, it will look as if each is tucked under one another. So this is the original position of where this first fan part should go but I want to rotate it around the center. And an easy way for me to do that is simply move this part up so it aligns with the center X0, Y0. And then simply use the circular array. My X, Y is at zero, and I'm only going to do 90 degrees. There's my fan. Now I need to just reposition it. So I would click on it, slide it down to line it up with the bottom, and stretch out the top. We can see that the left-hand side of the fan is slightly distorted, so we use the Distort tool. and we manipulate it till it looks appropriate. Of course, you need to bake it once you're done distorting it. And again, I'm going to flip it over to the right. And position it. The next part is the ribbons. So the ribbon at the top has a little twist to it. Again, I changed the contrast of the image so I can see where I'm actually drawing. I create two angular vectors, one on the left and one on the right, simply because if you really look close at the ribbon, it has a fold that's not just vertical or horizontal, but angular. So these angular vectors for our two rail sweep will help create that effect. I select my vectors. I select my profile. And hit apply. Check the 3D view. I may need to adjust its shape height or base height. I've created a vector to cut out that component to the appropriate size and shape that I want. Adjusting the shape, height, and base height is a constant process. You're tweaking it to make it look as if it's the real badge and you have to think about fitting it into your material. The little tails on the top ribbon 
are again rather easy. Drawing the vectors of the shape and creating a component from that. This will be a dish shape, I think. Very slight, but it has a concave look to it. I create a new component of that top curl. They'll be set to merge simply because I don't want to impact any extra pixels or spikes. But I'll take those two components when I'm happy with them and bake them together. And yes, I'll mirror them over to the right hand side. So we're moving along at a pretty good clip and you can see the biggest things are drawing vectors and thinking about how the shapes are. The same thing with the other two ribbons that are on the badge. The center ribbon could have been just a flat plate, but like I've mentioned before, I get concerned about the tear out on those square edges. I choose a domed shape and I limit its height so it has a slight rounded edge to it. For my last ribbon, I'm going to use the two rail sweep again. I've created two arcs, a left and a right, and a profile. That's the shape that I think it looks like to me. I've also created a vector just to keep what I want. And the top little curl uses the same process as before. Your component, a little dish shape, and then a second component to create the top curl. I need to move over this left hand side curl slightly so that it lines up with the image. So let's see what it looks like. I turn on all the levels to see the components and the end result is disappointing. This is not what I expected. So how do I fix this? Hmm. I guess we're just going to have to wait for a lesson 11. If you want to learn more about the software, subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to click on the bell to be notified of our next video. If you have any questions, send me an email, mm at mazalik.com. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Enjoy. Thank you.